Hey everybody, welcome back to Bob Key TV, and it's time once again for the broom wagon. A lot to get to this week. We got Pays Basque, Peru Bay, Drunken Motorists, Assaulting X World Champions, and of course the ubiquitous Peter Sagan. Win, lose, or draw, Sagan is always entertaining. All of that on the broom wagon. All right, let's get started with Pays Basque and the good, the bad, and the ugly. The good, Alberto Contador back on top, caning the time trial, winning the time trial to take the overall title in Pays Basque, a very mountainous, tough stage race in Spain. Contador back at his very best, his first stage win, uh, it's win in a stage race in 2016. And uh, if his form continues like this into the summer, which all indications are that Contador is back at his best, he's going to give Chris Froome everything he can handle at this year's Tour de France. Also the good, Nairo Quintana displaying a very solid time trial performance, losing by just a few seconds to Alberto Contador. But for Quintana, a good indication that the power against the clock is there and he will be very competitive in the Tour de France as well. Tour de France, two TTs this year. So Quintana also going to give Froome all he can handle in the Tour de France if he continues the way he's riding from Pays Basque. Also, the good from Pays Basque is uh, the stage win and subsequent celebration, or maybe a celebration and then stage win by Diego Rosa of the Astana squad, uh, the which will now become... <laughs> Commonplace bike hoist to win the stage. Take it away, Diego Rosa, the good of the Pays Basco. Also on the good, Lawson Craddock, the American on the Cannondale squad. Ninth, ninth against the best in the world in a very, very tough stage race. So Lawson Craddock started solid this year with Perry Nice, a good performance there. Was even a little bit better in Criterium International, but absolutely fantastic and pays box. So great riding by Lawson Craddock. Now on to the bad. Lawson's teammate, Pierre Roland, 26th at 14 minutes behind Alberto Contador, leaking time daily in pays box. And Pierre Roland, uh, hopefully, <laughs> hopefully before too long, he'll start to show some signs of life and give the team confidence to race for him during the Tour de France. That's why he's been hired. Uh, so far, it's not there, and time will tell if Pierre Roland can turn his season around, but uh, not great uh, in Pays Basque. Also, um, the Movistar squad choosing to change Nairo Quintana's road bike to his time trial machine partway through the time trial towards the end, and I have a feeling that that cost him the stage win in the time trial, which Quintana did do a good time trial, but it would have been a, a massive boost to his confidence to win the time trial in Pays Basque. He only lost by five seconds to Alberto Contador, and there were no real opportunities for Quintana to get time with the time trial bike in the closing miles of the time trial. Very technical, descents and climbs, twists and turns, wet roads all the way to the finish line. So Movistar maybe overthinking the time trial equipment a little bit too much, cost Quintana the stage win. Contador would have won the overall title regardless, but stage win would have been very, very nice for Nairo Quintana in a time trial. Okay, the ugly 30 riders abandoning Pays Basque stage five because of crashes and bad weather, bad health, a variety of reasons, but Dropping out Fabio Aru, Dan Martin, Simon Garens, Ryder Hagedal, and uh, Garens, especially for Garens and Dan Martin, who have a chance to win the Arden in the Ardennes Classics, Amstel Gold Race, Fletcher Lonely Age, Best Only Age, that are coming up in the next two weeks. And we'll have to see, time will tell whether or not that affects them adversely if they have enough race miles to be competitive in the big Ardennes, the Hilly Classics that are upcoming. All right, let's move on to Perry roubaix Perry roubaix won for the ages, and congratulations to Matt Heyman, 
15 tries, <laughs> baby, 15 tries. And he finally wins Perube Orica Green Edge. His squad seemed to win the big races consistently. And it's quite remarkable for a team with a much more modest budget than many out there. Great team rapport. And Matthew Heyman played his cards just right. Entered into the velodrome uh, with four riders. Edvald Bosenhagen, Sepp Van Marke, Tom Bonin, and Ian Standard with... A lot more to lose than Matt Heyman. Matt Heyman with absolutely nothing to lose, sat on the wheels, gambled that some of the breakaways in the final few kilometers might be successful, but he conserved just the right amount of energy and won the sprint for his most massive win of his career, Perry Roubaix. Forevermore, that brick, that cobble will be on his mantle in his trophy case. And uh, also, in the Roubaix Velodrome, you get to have one of the shower stalls with your plaque on it. So, big congratulations to, uh, to Matt Heyman for a spectacular win. Twice in the top 10, but 15 tries. That's a real hallmark. And in Perry Roubaix, the race itself, no matter what happens to the riders in front of you or behind, you always have to keep trying. And that's what Matt Heyman did, not just in this edition, but in all 15 of them. So your career and your day of racing defined by doggedness, determination, and never saying die. No surrender for Matt Heyman, and he comes up with the big wins. The bad, Fabian Cancellara, his farewell, Perry Roubaix, after three wins during his career, uh, looked to be in great position and riding well, right on the crown of the cobble section, and then a slip out, front wheel gets taken out, a little bit of inattention or <laughs> too much power, uh, who knows, but Cancellara goes down, takes Terpstra out, and Peter Sagan, airborne Peter Sagan, takes to the air <laughs> to avoid crashing, miraculous save by Peter Sagan, um, but uh, no teammates to help Sagan back into the front. Tom Bonin delayed also by that. No teammates either. And that might have cost Tom Bonin the win, expending a little bit too much energy and not having quite enough to overcome Matt Heyman for the win, which would have been Tom Bonin's fifth. Tom Bonin, no signs of slowing down or retiring. And he may very well get that fifth win in his career, maybe next year. Um, bad also edicts empty-handed for the cobbled classic season. Gent Wavelgem, Tour of Flanders, Perry-Roubaix, no wins and edicts. Uh, we'll have uh, some long months in the winter to think about uh, the misfires. And it seemed like they were on the back foot throughout the day, missing the breakaways and having the chase and then running out of firepower at the end in the critical moments of the race. And Tom Bonin, just not quite enough to finish it off. He got second, which is solid, but uh, Edix is used to winning, so a very disappointing spring campaign so far for the Edix squad. Also, um, Sagan, uh, you know, he's a one-man show, and the early portions of the race, his team does everything they can to help him, but oftentimes the Tinkel squad a little bit lacking in the finale of the classics and Peter Sagan not quite able to do it in Paris-Roubaix but uh, nothing taken away from Peter Sagan he had a great spring campaign. Uh, the Ugly. Uh, I did a video recently about Elia Viviani's crash with a TV motorbike um, where there was a, a pile up in the Arenberg Forest one of the most dangerous sections of road in all of professional cycling and Viviani taken out from behind by a TV motorbike that was unable to slow down, plowed into Viviani, smashed him into the fence, Viviani out of Paris-Roubaix, and uh, also the cameraman could have been injured in that crash also. So still, a lot to be done. Uh, the UCI, the governing body of our sport, needs to step in and have some clear rules, regulations, guidelines, training, for all of the people that drive the motorcycles and the cars that follow all the professional cycling races. So uh, until UCI does that, we're gonna continue to have these problems. So hopefully they can, they can show some leadership. That's their job. So Brian Cookson, it's up to you. 
get with all the stakeholders, get some clear directives for everybody involved in professional cycling to make the races a little bit safer. This whole Viviani episode precipitated by a crash by Mitch Docker. And take a look at this photo. This is what happens to you when you crash on the cobbles. Horrific images from Mitch Docker crashing on the cobbles. And you can see in the video of Viviani, of Viviani you can see what causes the crash. So a touch of wheels, banging of the handlebars, Mitch loses control of his bike and this is the result. Whew. That is truly the ugly part of the sport of cycling. Um, I've crashed on the cobbles before and it's like nothing else. It's like a meat grinder. It, you just can't believe the damage that's being done before you even come to a stop. And every time you crash on the cobbles, you get chewed up. Uh, Mitch Docker, tough bike racer. Uh, best of luck to Mitchell Docker and his um, uh, return to racing. And um, those images will stay with us for a very, very long time. <laughs> Brutal. Peru Bay. It's not called the hell of the north for nothing. And now it's time for the Musette Musings. Well, Philippe Gilbert and teammate uh, Loic Vlingen of the BMC squad uh, involved in a bizarre incident, uh, an altercation with two motorists resulting in Gilbert breaking his finger and requiring surgery uh, to put it back together. Uh, apparently two motorists, uh, and there's, there's a lot of uh, discrepancies in what actually transpired. It was reported that the drivers, uh, the two motorists were drunk and, uh, and swerved towards Gilbert and Vlingen, and um, they are disputing that, uh, the driver at least is, um, but, um, Philippe Gilbert has declined to comment on it since the news came out, but uh, regardless, uh, Philippe Gilbert will not be starting uh, the Brabant Pale. Uh, his participation in Anstel Gold Race also in question after a surgery. He says he feels fine, uh, but apparently um, ran into some sort of altercation out on the opening road, out on the open road on, on uh, Gilbert's local training routes, getting ready for the Ardennes Classics, which he is one of the best in the world at, and uh, took exception to the driving or was insulted. Um, the altercation carried uh, itself forward into the next town that they got to, and uh, Gilbert uh, breaking his finger, not <laughs> presumably um, striking one of the motorists, uh, but that's not necessarily the case. So. Uh, a very strange incident. Uh, whether or not the, the, the two motorists were under the influence while they were, were driving will probably be a big part of this case moving forward. And uh, I've said it a hundred times, I try to live it every day when I'm out on the road, be ready for anything. Uh, and as cyclists, we're very vulnerable uh, to people in cars, whether they're paying attention or whether they're um, purposefully trying to harm us. So uh, be ready for that out there. You know, <laughs> if I counted all the times I've had run-ins with motorists, uh, we'd be here for a very, very long time. Um, I think most cyclists uh, are very aware of their environment. Uh, they give plenty of room to motorists uh, to pass uh, out on the open roads and you know, to be honest, some motorists detest the sight of cyclists on the road. And if they're in, you know, a certain frame of mind, they will try to express that uh, verbally and physically at times. And so it's a, uh, every day is, every day is a challenge. When I get home uh, safe and sound every day, I knock wood and give thanks and uh, everybody, please be ready for whatever the open road has to throw at you and uh, act accordingly. In all honesty, 
it's much better not to engage with any motorists. Uh, if you have to continue to defend yourself in certain situations as they escalate, most certainly do so. But the number one uh, rule of thumb that I use is avoidance. Do not go down that road with motorists. Um, just hope that we can all get along and uh, enjoy the motorways, the bike paths, the trails in harmony and peace. All right, Philippe Gilbert, best of luck in your recovery uh, and uh, recent surgery. <laughs> it seems like an incident that uh, did not need to happen, but uh, uh, best of luck. And uh, hopefully the resolution comes speedily for the Belgian justice system. And that uh, if the motorists uh, are guilty of what they've been accused of, that they serve uh, a just amount of time, uh, financial penalty, whatever it is. And best of luck to the BMC squad and Philippe Gilbert and his recovery now from a very strange incident. All right. Tweet of the week. The tweet of the week <laughs> is awesome. I <laughs> uh, love this tweet of the week. All right. Tweet of the week <laughs> uh, involves Peter Sagan, uh, one of the most entertaining and talented bike racers of all time. Uh, he was asked <laughs> whether he believed himself to be the cycling ver version of Zlatan Ibrahimovic, and this was his reaction. Some people say you are cycling Zlatan Ibrahimovic, a big star. Who is Ibrahimovic? Who is Ibrahimovic? One of the most famous soccer stars of all time, born in Sweden. Uh, Ibrahimovic's dad was Serbian, mom Croatian, and uh, one of the big stars of international football, or soccer as we call it in the United States. Uh, and Peter Sagan, <laughs> rather than take the bait, rather than get into a lengthy comparison, um, <laughs> he has the most hilarious and disarming way of handling uh, situations, and, and it's great to have Peter Sagan in our sport. <laughs> and it's, uh, uh, he has quotes like that all the time, and I'm sure that uh, they won't stop anytime soon, which make, makes my job on Bob Key TV a whole lot easier. So thank you, Peter Sagan. All right, that is, that is it. For this week's broom wagon, thanks everybody for tuning in. Uh, I think we're closing in on about 4,000 subscribers. So thanks everybody so much for the subscriptions. Keep them coming. Comments uh, might go into the comment section and uh, do a vid on answering questions. And uh, thumbs up, essential. Follow me on Twitter and Facebook. Thanks everybody. And so that Antoine Dumontier does not die in vain, the UCI has to do something. And I have. I have three suggestions that um, might be might be instructive for the UCI to consider.